Seamus Donahue of UP University. Today is Saturday, May the 11th, 2013, and I am on the Singularity test server, checking out the new scanning features in Odyssey. Um, not all the exploration-related features planned for Odyssey have been implemented as yet. Uh, hacking and archaeology sites are not working, for example. That's the old radar and magnetometric sites. They're now called data and relic sites, respectively. Um, so I'm not going to be covering that in this video. I'm just going to be showing you the new scanning mechanics. So here I have Seamus, my Seamus Dunahoo character in a nude hogger. Oh my goodness, an EVE University capital! Relax, it's just singularity. So I have my main in a nid hogger. Uh, with, out with 11 drones. Uh, you'll see why in a moment. And I am sitting at basically a mid-warp safe spot somewhere in the foreign solar system. By the way, in case you weren't aware, a lot of things are seated on Singularity for only 100 disc each, including carriers and dreadnoughts. Not super carriers, not titans. So I have my alt in a Helios Covert Ops frigate. With an expanded probe launcher loaded up with combat scanner probes. Now, if I go to the solar system map, I already have the scanner window open. Oh, by the way, to open the scanner window, Alt D works by default. Uh, clicking the old button doesn't do anything except bring up the radial menu. So, if you're bringing up the radial menu, you then have to go left for the system scanner. But left, down, or right will bring up any of the tabs of the old scanner window. And you just go to the system scanner tab from there. So from the scanner window, I am going to click launch pinpoint formation. And that launches the formation on the sun. Uh, I can left click and drag any of the spheres to both expand the scan radius and expand the formation. So both of those things happen at the same time. Left click and drag, no modifiers. There's a single control box for the formation as a whole, and that works basically as the old mechanic. So click and drag a surface of the box to move on a plane, click and drag on one of the arrows to move along a line. Okay. I can double click a probe in the formation list to center on that probe. The top probe in the list is usually the center of the formation. Right? So if you've moved the formation around, you can double left click the top probe in the formation to recenter your map view on it. Left click and drag an empty space to rotate the camera around on the map. All right, so far so good. Uh, so basically, if you're trying to find something, uh, you can just put out the formation real quick, expand the formation to largest radius, and run a scan. So no more having to set out each probe individually. Now you'll see a whole bunch of dots here, um, a whole bunch of brackets here, most of them drones, one of them's a ship. That's why I had uh, Eleven Jones put out. In this video, I'm going to show you the scatter that's involved in uncertainty when you don't have when you don't have 100% solution on the thing that you're trying to scan down. All right, so I have the carrier itself at 12.7%. I don't know that it's a carrier yet, and a whole bunch of drones and probes at 1.0%. So I can move the formation, center it on that cluster. By the way, this is also how some players look for mission runners. They're scanning down the drones and pro uh, they're scanning down the drones that you use. I can contract the formation a bit, and given the spread, I think I could go down two notches and scan again. Uh, let me center my view by double clicking, so I can see what's going on. So there's still a cluster there. I can center the probe formation uh, basically in the middle of that cloud. Let's drop the scan radius again. I think I can go down again two notches based on what I'm seeing.
But other than the convenience of being able to manipulate the entire probe formation with just left click and drag, not having to hold down modifiers or anything, and not having to position every single probe in the formation, uh, scanning is a lot faster now. So go down another two notches, I scan again. I've already got a solution on the Nidhogger. I just only have 15% on the drones. Of course, I'd be able to just warp to the carrier at this point. Alright. Uh, by the way, in the current build of Singularity, the radius doesn't up. When you change the radius settings on the map, it doesn't update on the window list. Hopefully, that's going to be fixed in a future build before this gets pushed out to tranquility. But anyway, uh, that's how the new scanning mechanics work. I'm going to show you some of the new modules here. The ones that I have actually fit to my ship are the scan pinpointing array. Uh, and because my Kovops frigate is sitting next to a carrier, I can just use the carrier's fitting services to breathing, bring these things online. Uh, but in order for these modules to take effect, I have to pull in the probes that I currently have out and launch out a new set. Oh, you know what? I forgot to dim before and after. I need to do a proper before and after. My fault. Uh, let me put out the probes again without the scan pinpointing arrays first. And let me show you the kinds of deviations that you would get, that I'm gonna get, that I'm getting on my skills. This character has astrometrics 5, astrometric everything else level 3. So, if I scan like this, again, this is without the scan pinpointing arrays. I'm not going to get 100% solution, so there will be deviation. The drones are, I only have to 1.1%, and the deviations are going out as far as 16 astronomical units. Keep in mind that the real distance between me and those drones is much closer to a few kilometers. If I can... Yeah, this is why... Yeah, so a couple of kilometers is how far I am from those drones. But the scan deviation is off by as much as 16 astronomical units. Oh, you can also double-click brackets uh, to center your view on those brackets. So yeah, at a 64 astro scan at near zero signal strength, I'm off by about 16 astros. That's 17 astros. That's quite a lot. Right? But if I pull in these probes. Now I'm going to online my three scan pinpointing arrays tech 2, which are each a negative 40% modifier on the maximum deviation. Stacking penalized. I'm going to put out a new set of probes. Expand that formation. And run another scan. Now the greatest deviation is only six astronomical units. Now you see why I put out uh, ten drones earlier. It's so I can get this scatter uh, and get a nice sampling of what the deviations look like. But yeah, the deviations are only off by about six astros, whereas before they were about 17 astronomical units. That's a significant improvement, especially given the fact that I'm on a 64 astro scan. Right? That means I can center my formation uh, on one of those things and drop my scan radius down one, two, three notches. I could go all the way down from 64 astros to eight astros. Scan again. And I've got a tight cluster here. The deviations are less than one astronomical unit now. So I can drop 
another three settings, or possibly even uh, four settings, go all the way down to 0 0.5. And that tight cluster, scan it all. So yeah, there you go. 100% solution in just two scans. Alright, so I expect the scan pinpointing arrays tech 2 to be extremely significant uh, in combat probing, or just any sort of probing in general, even if you're just trying to find cosmic signatures rather than other ships. So going from max range to minimum range, you can do that in basically three scans. One at the max range, one at the intermediate range, one at the shortest range. An experienced prober can be really quick with this, and scanning is going to be a lot faster now. So that's the uh, scan pinpointing array. There are also the scan acquisition arrays and the scan range finding arrays. And just as an experiment, let me use those carrier fitting surfaces again. Keep in mind, I can drag modules into and out of the fitting window because I'm sitting next to a carrier. Normally you can't do that in space. You need a, something with fitting services, either a Starbase module, Orca, Rorqual, Carrier, Supercarrier, Titan. Uh, let me put in the scan acquisition arrays this time. And let me see how much quicker that makes my scanning. Yeah, that felt faster. One, two, beep. And if I offline these, scan again. One, two, three, four, beep. Alright, so the scan acquisition arrays aren't quite as good numerically. It's only a 20% reduction per module to uh, scan time. Uh, so I'm expecting that anybody who wants to probe quickly is probably going to want to use the pinpointing arrays rather than the acquisition arrays. The range finding arrays are probably going to be useful for anyone who is trying to find hard sites, or may have low skills. I have a carrier at 52.5%. I don't know if this will take effect unless I put out a new set of probes. No. Okay, so let me recall the probes. I'll launch out a new set. Let's bring the formation over here. Sixteen Astros again. Let me try this again. Now I had fifty-two point five percent before. Seventy-one point two percent. All right. So the range finding arrays will help you find sites that were more difficult before, that were possibly beyond your skills. If you're a low-skilled scanner. Uh, for the higher skilled scanners, you're probably going to want to use the pinpointing arrays instead. Those are the impressions that I'm getting given the current numbers on Singularity. Uh, by the way, this is build 531040. All right. Also, if you're onlining any of these mid-slot arrays while in space, uh, the acquisition arrays seem to be modifiers to your launcher, so you don't need to replace your probes in order for that to take effect. But if you're onlining uh, range finding or pinpointing arrays, those modify your probes, so you have to launch out a new set of probes for the new arrays to take effect if you onlined them in space. If you're fitting out your ship in station and you don't change your fittings in space, then this isn't an issue. Alright, so those are the new scanning mechanics as they currently stand on Singularity. Thank you for watching.